It's been called the end of the line. Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. Brushy Mountain's got a lot of history. Been uh, fully maxed. It's known throughout the world. Warden Jim Worthington lovingly calls it Old Brushy, but says it's been the end of the line for some of the most dangerous criminals. It's also known as the Alcatraz of the South. Razor wire, and uh, we also have double fencing all the way around the facility. We have a stone wall, and on top of that wall, we had uh, electrical votes, 2,400 votes. And then we also men with the tariffs. They are this on. to me is the most secure prison in the state of Tennessee. No one, to my knowledge, has ever successfully escaped from Brushy Mountain behind the wall. Yet part of its notoriety comes from made-for-movie escape attempts by infamous inmates, like reported Martin Luther King Jr. assassin James Earl Ray. Sergeant David Bunch was just a kid, but remembers it well. We was over at my grandma's. And there was a bunch of us kids playing in the yard. And the biggest thing I remember is the whistle blowing because it seemed like it was never going to stop. And, you know, you blow it once, and one long blow tells you, you know, there's been an escape. And then they would blow it one additional time for however many was gone. And like I say, it just seemed like it blew forever that night. You can hear it real good, too. It echoes all over its hollow. Counting Ray, there were seven inmates that tried to escape that day in June 1977. They made a homemade ladder out of steel, and one afternoon they called it a distraction somewhere else, and they went over the wall. Right there in the corner of the wall, that's where they put the little uh, ladder to climb across and escape. Did they just take off into the mountainside? Yes, or? they sure did. Uh-huh. One of them was shot going over the wall, which caught him right off, and then... Uh, the others, uh, they had them all rounded up within a three-day period. James was gone the longest, I think. James Earl Ray was found hiding in bushes after three days on the lam. Reporters from all over the world descended on the little town of Petros to cover that escape attempt, but... It isn't the one that haunts guards at Brushy today. In August of 2005, Brushy inmate George Hyatt was being transported from the Roan County Courthouse when his wife Jennifer opened fire to free him, killing correction officer Wayne Morgan. Officer Morgan, we called him Cotton, was a very, very likable person for the inmates and also for the staff. The Hyatts, who seemed to fancy themselves a modern-day Bonnie and Clyde, were nabbed 36 hours later, but left an imprint on Brushy forever. We never know when our staff is leaving this facility, transporting inmates to court, hospital runs, what could happen, and it does happen. But there's more to Brushy than daring plots and high-profile inmates. There's something else, something almost mystical about the place. 113 years old, built with stones, quarried and hand-carved by the inmates themselves. It's shaped like a cross. The warden says the design was intended to promote Christianity. From the front, it looks like a castle, a fortress nestled in mountains, embraced by the small community surrounding it. People like Keith Atkinson. kind of grew up with the place before I ever got here. <laughs> Never dreamed to be working here. Yet he's been there 32 years. Sergeant David Bunch has been there 14. I guess it gets in your blood. My grandfather hard in back in the 40s. He retired in 1972. My dad retired in 1998. I've had two uncles pass away working here. I've got another uncle that works over at uh, Morgan County right now. So it's just, it's in my blood. He spends day in, day out with men some consider the scum of the earth. He doesn't look at it that way. Up here at Brushy Mountain, we treat a man like a man. And recently, I got a phone call, and it was an ex-inmate saying thank you for the way we treated him up here. I don't want to know their charges, and it's, you know, it's better if you don't know their charges. You give respect, you get respect. And that's, that's my philosophy. You treat a man like a man, and he's going to treat you like a man. But now the last of the inmates have been bussed to other prisons as Brushy gets ready to close its doors. Brushy is old. It's very costly to keep it going. And we're really limited to five, 600 beds. But now with the new prison, we're moving to another century and moving with time. I'm just sad that the prison's closing. And they, most of my buddies and stuff that's been here a long time, they're the same way too. It's sad. You know, we never thought Brushy Mountain would close. No one. They say change is good, which to a point it is. But I guess once you get used to something, you know, you just like to keep it around. A lot of history here. A lot of people was raised right here. I hate to see it go.
There are some ideas for old brushy, from a bed and breakfast to a tourist attraction to a movie set. Someone's even floated the idea of housing Guantanamo Bay detainees there. But for now, it looks like the end of the line for the end of the line. Been a good ride, been a good history, and served the Tennessee Department of Correction and the citizens of Tennessee proudly. But uh, now we're moving on. And when the last inmate stepped on the bus, everybody knew then, hey, brushy is closed. I'm Katherine Howell.